What's up guys, Gypsy back here today, bringing you my week 5 match in the MPL. This week we're going up against Cypher Blocker and the Detroit Leopards. Uh, Cypher's in my division, so we're going to be facing a couple of times this season. Um, so as a result, I'm not going to be doing like an in-depth team builder because I wasn't forced to reveal certain sets during the match. And in case I want to bring them to our next game, uh, it's just best that I keep them to myself. But I will be giving a little brief overview of the mods that I brought this week and their roles. So first up we have a Life Orb Weavile, uh, a pretty, pretty standard, um, it's EV to outspeed, um, max speed Neuven, and uh, it's it's pretty, does a lot of damage to his team basically, once Conkeld is taken out of the picture, once Heatran's weakened, it can just do huge work to his team. It's a nice revenge killer for certain mons on his squad, so that is Weavile's, uh, Weavile's main role. Uh, next up we've got Mega Pinsir, Mega Pinsir breaks his team down, I uh, can potentially sweep, I'm running bulk up. Uh, this week because it does allow me to beat uh, the Gliscor and the Umbreon easier. Uh, foul play from the Umbreon um, is, does a lot more if I'm a Sword Stance set than if I am a, uh, a bulk up set because I am getting the defense boost in tandem with the uh, attack boost right there. So um, Mega Pinsir does huge damage to the team. It's got quick attack which is really nice priority for like a boosting Mega, Medi uh, Mega Gallade. Um, obviously return destroys Conkelda's life, so that's that's pretty nice. It just, it, um, the combination of Weavile and Negapinsa, they weaken each other's checks and counters, which is uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, next up we've got Mew. Mew's here to put dents in his team, to defog rocks away for uh, my two aforementioned mons. It can also, with its coverage moves, hurt a lot of his team. And it's pretty bulky, I've got a lot of uh, HP investment, so it can take a lot of hits from his team and comfortably roost up if need be. Next up we've got Stunfisk whose role here is to check Heatran and Thunderous I to an extent. It sets rocks and unless he's bringing like default Gliscor my rocks are going to be here to stay so that's pretty nice. Uh, and Stunfisk is also carrying the HP ice so I can spam Gliscor on the switch in if I need to make that sort of prediction because Gliscor is a pretty nice uh, check to uh, Stunfisk whilst it's uh, Toxic Orb is up. Uh, next we have the Whimsicott who is uh, running a pretty offensive spread this week. I can take out the Mega Gallade with the Moonblast um, if he's if he's just got a little bit of chip damage on him, a few Stealth Rock switch-ins or um, some damage from, uh, you know, if he comes in to take hit from you or even a knockoff, a couple of knockoffs from Ellen Mamola, he's in range to die from Moonblast, so that's pretty nice. Um, I'm carrying the U-turn for momentum as well as the HP Ice with the Gliss score. Um, next up we have Alma Mola, my last one on my team, and basically it's here to tank. Tank hits from his squad really. Um, it's carrying Wish, so I can Wish up, pass Wishes to the rest of my team. It's got, uh, it's got Knock Off. Knock Off is pretty important because items are going to be a big thing this game. I am expecting a Scarf Heatran because it is, look, looking at the team he's brought, it's one of the only checks he has to a Mega Pinsel. Um, Thunderous. Obviously, is another check, but Thunderous is pretty pressured to take on Mega Pinsir because it, if it's going to switch in every time, it's going to have a really hard time staying around. It can switch in once on return and then it goes down to a quick attack with some prior damage. Um, so that is the team. There you have the team. And as you can see, Cypher's brought a really threatening team. He had the option of bringing uh, Tentacruel to spin. He had the option of bringing Northern and Celebi. Those are the mons that really are uh, the other mons that posed some sort of threat to my team but he didn't bring those so he's still got a really strong strong team he's got the thunderous which you know is basically the biggest threat in his team uh, the heatran if i can scatter the set should be handleable uh should be manageable but um that being said he may play it really smart and not let me knock it off if it is a scarf set so we'll see how that goes but leading off um we'll jump into the match right here so he sends out his thunderous as i send in my mute you matched up pretty well against uh, the majority of his team, and right here I just love to stay in and go for the Ice Beam, knowing I can deal huge damage to the Thunderous if he decides to stay in. He goes for the Taunt. Uh, the Taunt was an interesting play. If I was like a setup in turn 1 and I just wanted to start setting up, or even if I was a Stealth Rock variant, Taunt right there was a nice play on his behalf. But he pops this Citrus Berry and gets back to a range where Ice Beam will actually take him out from that range. So. He switches out here and goes into his Umbreon as I just fire off another Ice Beam because um, there's no reason to make you know massive bold predictions this early in the game. I want to get a feel for how he plays. Uh, South has got a pretty interesting playstyle. I've watched a few of his matches and uh, he's pretty pretty difficult to read, I'll say that much. Um, but he goes to his Umbreon here, eats up the Ice Beam. 
as I had to switch out into my Sunfist right here. And I switched out my Sunfist because he was likely going to Toxic right there. And this just means free rocks. And while it does whittle down Stunfisk, I do have Wish support from Alamomola. And getting rocks up is well worth copying the Toxic on Stunfisk there. So in comes my Whimsicott. And right here, uh, Moonblast was extremely obvious by me. Um, Moonblast does massive damage to the Umbreon. Um, so I predicted him to switch out to his Heatran, but he actually switches out into his Thunderous, which was a very questionable play in my opinion, as Moonblast would have definitely taken Thunderous out from 35, 37%, but he offers to bring it in as IU turn out, and he just gets the wish back. So that's uh, that's an interesting play, but nice of him. As I just bring in my Mew, and once again, I know I can stand and fire up an Ice Beam. He shows off the Dark Pulse, and that does over 50%, so that's uh, that's pretty, pretty bad um, for Mew, but getting damage on the Thunderous is definitely most important because at this range he does die to a quick attack from Mega Pinsir. So Mew gets the freeze right here on Thunderous which although it seems really unfortunate it doesn't matter in the big scheme of things because he ends up thawing next turn or uh, the first turn so that's that's nice. Um, but I was actually guaranteeing uh, on the fact that he'd stay frozen for at least one turn meaning Mew could roost up and really just put in a ton of work versus the rest of his team. Uh, however, he gets the first turn Thor, which is fine, and takes out Mew. So Mew goes down there. Obviously, it was a dice roll that turn. Uh, it didn't really pay off, but Mew still put in the work. Now, right here, uh, I really don't agree with this play. Um, Thunderous is the only Mon, realistically, who can check my Alamomola. Whilst Mega Glade could set up, potentially, I do have many, many ways to check Mega Glade. Uh, Ice Shard was pretty obvious for me, but... <laughs> he uh, he actually opts to leave his Thunderous in here. Um, I, I would have thought Heatran would have been a better switch in. but So I just go for the Pursuit here. Um, but he actually stays in in Thunder Wave. So I Shard would have out-prioritized Thunder Wave, meaning a Thunderous would have done absolutely nothing there if I'd gone for the Ice Shard. But, you know, he decides to stay in and sack off his Thunderous here, as it does die to the Pursuit. And, you know, whilst we was paralyzed, it is a trade I'm fairly willing to make. I can still get pretty good Ice Shard damage off on the Gliscor if I need to, as well as on the Omega Glade, because it still does a decent amount of chip damage considering I am Life Orb. Um, so in comes the Heatran, and Sigurdus goes for the Toxic, predicting my switch out into Alamomole nicely. He misses the first Toxic, but it doesn't matter, he's just going to stay in and go for the second, as I just go for the knockoff. And I knock off his Scarf, so we did kind of predict that um, earlier on in the match. It is a really nice bring on his part, because it is the only real thing on his team now that can check my Mega Pinsir, but he actually lets it get knocked off. He actually lets it get knocked off, which um, another question will play. But getting Elmol Toxic was also pretty important for his team, so I can understand that. Um, but in comes the Mega Gallade, and right here, he's not going to bring in Mega Gallade unless it has the ability to, to set up a substitute or to set up like a Swords Dance or a bulk up on my Elmol. So I just have to bring in my Whimsicott right here after I hit him with a knockoff on the switch. If anything, he was going to go for the Leaf Blade or the T-Punch, Thunder Punch, I think he gets Thunder Punch, so Whimscott was pretty safe here, as I can now fire off the Moonblast Infiltrator, um, going th right through the sub, and you're in the sub, so. Uh, right here, he brings in his Gliscor, and this is fine for me. I can just fire off a Hidden Power Ice, as he chooses to go for the Earthquake, so. Um, not really sure what the prediction was on that play. Um, by my opponent, but in comes the Heatran, and I just stay in and go for the Hidden Power Ice. Uh, I stay in as I don't really know what the Gliscor set it is, and it's not worth, you know, over predicting that turn, as I have been getting the predictions. Uh, I don't know, I've been predicting Cypher to make optimal plays, and it just hasn't really been working out. Um, but he just goes to Lava Plume here, as Stumpfist can eat that up. Um, but in tandem with the Toxic Damage, it is, you know, it's wearing me down. Uh, this turn, I go for the HP Ice because the Earth Power was pretty obvious on my behalf, but he was willing to sack Heatran to an Earth Power, I guess, at that point in the match, as I just show off the Hidden Power Ice, as the Flash Cannon does 14% with a crit, so, yeah, you know, it's I, I don't really know what's going on at this point in the match, but I just go to my Alamomola, and I can comfortably wish up versus this Umbreon if I want to, but I just like to knock off, i uh, just removing the leftovers in case Umbreon was an issue later on versus my team. Um, it gives Pinsir an easier time, you know, sweeping, if I do get an SD up, uh, 
not having the passive recovery from leftovers is pretty nice for things like Weeball and Mega Pinsir. So I go for the Ice Beam here as he wishes up. Now, like he wished, I figured he might might pass it to the Gliscor right here, so I didn't want to risk that. I just go for the Ice Beam as he gets frozen. Uh, but again, it's not going to matter because he just unthaws uh, pretty pretty soon after this. As I just wish, and now I can just go into my Stun Fisk to pass the wish off to Stun Fisk as he thaws right here. So he protects that turn. Uh, again, I, Alamola wasn't doing much to the Umbreon, so I don't understand the Protect Blade, but that's fine. Um, I just Earth Power here. Now he's wished up, so I just go for the Hidden Power Ice here, predicting the Gliscor to come in. And we do manage to kill off the Gliscor there with the Stun Fisk, so that's pretty nice. The crit obviously didn't matter. It was four times super effective, and in comes the Conkelda, so Alamola can take any hit with ease as he just goes for the knockoff and that does that's a, he gets a crit, it does a 49 so that's pretty unfortunate. Um, the reason being I would have been able to switch out next turn into Mega Pinsir, uh, into regular Pinsir, tank any hit if need be and then take him out with the return and basically win from there um, meaning I won with a high differential but the crit happens, it happens, you know it's the game we play so Alamomola will go down here. Um, to the Conkelda, who just fires off a Mac Punch, and right here I can just bring my Mega Pinsir and basically clean up the game. So, uh, there's no point setting up here in case he has Stone Edge. Um, I'm better off just taking him out of the return as in comes the Umbreon. I bulk up here on his Protect um, just to show that I've got it, <laughs> basically. Um, and I can just take him out of the return this turn, so that's pretty nice for Mega Pinsir. As in comes the Heatran, I can just EQ to take him out. And there we have the match, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, definitely go and check out Cypher, he's been improving every week in the MPL. His record does not represent the way he's been playing. He's, you know, he's He had a really, really good game versus Jolt, really close game. He's um, Basically all his games have been really close losses, So, and he's a really, really cool guy from my, my experience with him. I only met him recently, but he seems like a really cool guy. So. Go check him out in the comments, uh, sorry, in the description below, and check out the rest of the MPL. I'll be leaving the link in the description. Uh, let, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. If you enjoyed the battle, drop a like, and let me know what you thought of the match. Um, and if you haven't already subbed to my channel and you are watching me for the first time, feel free to you know sub if you want to see more content in the future. I do upload draft content to my channel of all kinds. I'm involved in two leagues and I'm going to be adding another one to my list pretty soon so that's a pretty big announcement that I'm pretty excited to make but nonetheless we do our uh, we are on a 5-5-0 win streak at the moment so next week we face off against our last division rival that is Tog Togavor and uh, hopefully you know we can keep the keep the streak going but we'll see how we go uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time